Hey gang, it's Ron Marsh here inside the chapel at Gateway. I am just thinking about the sermon series that's coming up called Ready for Departure. And I've been thinking about all of these scriptures that have to do with what we call eschatology, the study of the end times. And thinking about many of you, some of you will be watching this weekend online, some of you will be in our courtyard. And you know, I've been praying um, over what to share and how to share it with you. And uh, it's exciting days that we live in, it truly is. Um, my prayer for each of us is that, I know it's gonna be kind of a controversial word because it's so misunderstood, is that each of us would have an apocalypse. Okay, the word apocalypse, right? What do you think of when you think of apocalypse? I know many of us think the end of the world, right? Everything is destroyed and maybe you think of zombie apocalypse or something like that. It's interesting, the word in the Bible though, the biblical word actually means unveiling. In fact, there's a whole book with the title, Apocalypse. You know what it is? It's called Revelation. Uh, that revelation, that unveiling that John tells us about when it comes to the end times is really interesting in our life. I believe this though, that John wasn't the only one that had an apocalypse. I mean, Paul had an apocalypse when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. Uh, we see in Jacob, had an apocalypse. Even Joseph himself had an apocalypse in the Old Testament of God and God revealing what his gifts were, but also what it meant for him to save all of Israel through his lead leadership. And I'm believing this for each of us, that as we study these passages about Jesus coming back, his appearing and his second coming, that we will each have an apocalypse, an unveiling for our good. That's what that means, an unveiling for our good that each of us would come to know Christ in a closer way, that we would be motivated to share his love and grace with a world that's really confused right now, and that we would have this, what we call the blessed hope, which is waiting for his great appearing in the day to come. So my encouragement for you today is open your Bible. Maybe you look to Revelation and you say, oh my gosh, it's such a hard book to really understand. I'll tell you what, you can find that Revelation, as John Corson says, is the only book that comes with a promise. And on top of that, has its own divine outline. You can look there in Revelation 1.19, it tells us John is gonna talk about the things that were, the things that are, and the things that are yet to come. And much of the church is written about the age of the church through chapter two and three. We see chapter four is about the rapture and his coming, chapter five, chapter six, Again, all the way until chapter 19 is about God pouring out his wrath, again, on an unbelieving, sinful world. But the great news about all of that is we won't have to be here as believers to be a part of all of that. Now, I know many people will think differently about eschatology and the timeline, and we will talk about that on Sunday. I hope that you are ready, though, that you are ready even today, because it may not be an apocalypse like you think that it'll be the end of things and it's horror, but God may want to actually give you an apocalypse to give you something really good, despite what you're faced with, and that you will be ready actually to meet him in your situation, your circumstance, what you're going through right now, and that God would use you to reach out to friends, to neighbor, to uh, family members who don't yet know him, and draw them towards your savior and encourage them with the words that come from scripture. In fact, I hope you'll watch on Sunday, that you'll be here if you can be, if you wanna be. Uh, we're gonna be here at nine o'clock to actually hear from the word an encouraging part that we would look up to our hope is coming. God bless you today. I encourage you with these words straight out of 1 Thessalonians 4. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died, he rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. God bless you. We'll see you next time.